Hey y'all, welcome to Ms. Clark's chemistry class. In my lesson about calculating average atomic mass, the problems that we worked, because it was your very first time, were pretty simplistic. And so I wanted to work a few more problems that were just a slightly bit more complex. So get some paper, get a calculator, something to write with, and let's get started. Okay y'all, let's start with this problem. Copper used in electric wires come in two isotopes. Copper 63 has an atomic mass of 62.929601 AMUs and an abundance of 69.17%. Copper 65 has an abundance of 30.83%. The average atomic mass of copper is 63.546 atomic mass units. Calculate the atomic mass of copper 65. So let's write out everything we have. Are you already noticing that we were given the average atomic mass? Normally, that's what we're solving for. Also, another thing I want you to notice, this is the mass number, and sometimes that's the only mass number you're given, and so that's the mass number you use. This problem specifically gave us a very precise measurement for the mass of copper 63, and here it is right there, 62.929601. So this is going to be the mass, and we're gonna multiply that mass times the percent abundance, okay? Now, we're missing a little piece, and that's the piece that we're actually solving for. I go ahead and set this up exactly like I would, and I leave blanks for my missings and then try to work backwards and use some of my, my logic to figure out what to do. Okay, so let's go ahead and list these. I've got copper 63. We do know the mass of this. We've got 62.929601. That's a long decimal number, but let's go ahead and write all of it. And then it's percent right here, this 69.17. I'm gonna move my decimal. 0.6917. Okay, so I've got my problem set up for copper 63. Let's do copper 65. Now copper 65, we do not have the atomic mass. That is what we're solving for. I'm going to put an X there. We do have a percent of abundance though. We've got this 30.83. So I'm going to move my decimal. 3083 equals. And we also know the average atomic mass. So when we get this answer, we know that this plus this equals the atomic mass. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that in the bottom, 63.546. Okay, I'm gonna put this in the calculator because that is definitely where I need to start. 62.929601 times 0.6917. Okay, I'm getting 43.528. Now, I can't do my next problem because I have X there. But remember, we know that the average atomic mass is the sum of these two parts. We have one of the parts, so we could just subtract. So if we take our 63.546 and subtract 43.528, now I lined, I lined that up, but I am definitely putting that in the calculator, and I'm getting 20.018. That's what goes in this spot. So now we can work this algebra problem. We have x times 0 0.3083 equals 20.018. So since our x is being multiplied, to get x all by itself, we need to divide. And so x equals 64.930. Okay, y'all. I hope that made sense. Let's do another problem. Okay, if you're in my class, we've already worked this problem in class, and I know, I know. Why am I working it again? But this is the most missed question I give, y'all. Y'all are going to see this on a quiz and a test, and it is the most highly missed question. So I wanted to go through it one more time, especially if when you're working on your practice, you got stuck. Okay, so what makes reading this graph so... What makes this graph a challenge is that when you normally read a mass spec graph, you wanna make sure that all of your bars add up to 100. But dang, are we noticing this bar goes all the way up to 100? How can our bars add up to 100 if one of our bars goes all the way up to 100? Well, if we notice on the y-axis, it just says relative abundance. There's no percent relative abundance. We have to make the percents first. So let's do that. Now remember, a percent is just a part of a whole. So we've got two samples. We've got isotope X 
I'm going to use X as a generic element because it doesn't tell us what it is. We just know the mass is 10. So we've got massotope. We've got an isotope with 10. We've got an isotope with 11. So if we look at where the 10 is reading, it pretty much looks right on the 20. If we look where the isotope 11 is, that's the one that goes all the way to 100. That's the whole reason why we're in this mess. So isotope 10, that's part. Isotope 11, here is its part. So now we need a hole. A hole is the total sample. So we're gonna add these together. 20 plus 100 is 120. Now we need to do part divided by whole. Now that first problem already kind of looks like that, part divided by whole. So now I'm just gonna draw a line here and do my whole. Now, when we do this division, we are going to get a decimal. And really, to get a percent, we would need to multiply by 100. I'm gonna be really honest with y'all. I don't multiply by 100. The decimal is what we need to begin with. You know, we do mass times the percent, but the percent's a decimal. Here, let me show you. I'm going to go ahead and multiply by 100 and show you. Okay, so I'm getting 16.67% here, and I'm getting 83.33% here. Now, when we get ready to set this problem up, I always like to keep everything straight and organized. We're going to take our mass, and we're gonna multiply our percent, but it needs to be a decimal. So we need to move our decimal two places. Y'all, if we wouldn't have multiplied by 100, that's what we would have gotten. Again, if we wouldn't have multiplied by this, that's what we would have gotten. That's why I'm telling you, I skipped the multiply by 100 part because why turn it into a percent just to turn it right back into a decimal? Kinda of seems counterproductive. Okay, so let me get this next problem. The mass was 11. The percent after we move the decimal is 0.8333. All right, let's put this in the calculator. This first one doesn't need to be put in the calculator because it's just multiplying by 10. That's just moving the decimal. And then this last one I definitely need to put in the calculator. And I'm getting 9.166. You add these together. And I am getting 10.833. Now, y'all, y'all could look on the periodic table at the average atomic mass find the one that's closest to this, and identify this element. This element is actually boron. I got one more problem. This problem has a couple of missing pieces. We are missing the mass of neon 22. We're also missing the percent abundance of neon 21. So we gotta figure this out, y'all. Okay, some things we know going into this problem. Let me change color so some things stand out a little bit. We know that these percents have to equal 100%. And we also know the average atomic mass of neon. The only problem is, is we gotta find it on the periodic table. And that is 20.1979. Now it's kind of a lot of decimal points, but I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it like that. Okay, so now we need to work to figure out what we don't know. Now the easiest blank I think to fill in is this one. We know that this percent, this percent, this percent has to equal 100. So we could just do 90.48 plus 9.25. Let me get that total here. I'm getting 99.73. So if we subtract that from 100, we see that this percent is only 0.27%. Okay, so we've got our first missing blank. Now we're gonna solve for that last missing blank just like we did on the very first problem. And I bet I'm gonna need a little bit more space. Okay, so for neon 20, I'm gonna start setting up my problem like I normally would, using some logic to fill in some blanks. So for neon 20, I need its mass. You see how this rounds up to the, the mass of 20, but this is its actual mass. In some problems, you just use the mass number here, and then other problems gonna give you the actual mass. So it's just whatever the problem gives you. Okay, so now we do multiply that by the percent, 0 0.9048. I'm not gonna put it in the calculator yet. I'm gonna go ahead and do neon 21. Oops, I changed my pen color on accident. 21 and we've got 
0.0047 times that by 0 0.0027. we got to move that decimal. When they're tidying little percents like that, you got to be really careful. One and two, that's two zeros. Okay, let's keep going. We've got neon 22. We don't know this, but we do know this. Okay, I'm going to start putting this in the calculator. 19.992440 times 0 0.9048. Okay, and that's giving me 18.089. Then I've got 20.993847 times 0 0.0027. And I'm only getting 0 0.0567. And again, we know that when we add this, this, and whatever this is, it's got to equal the average atomic mass. And we said the average atomic mass from the periodic table is 20.1979. So again, we can add and subtract. So I'm going to add 18.089 plus 0.0567, and I'm getting 18.1457. Now we need to subtract those, so 20.1979 minus 18.1457. Okay, so I'm getting 2.052, so now we've got this last little bit, and y'all, I'm running out of room. Okay, so we've got x, we've got x being multiplied by this number, 0 0.0925, and it equals this number. So to get x all by itself, we need to divide. So 2.052 divided by 0.0925. Y'all, I'm just going to do that. I'm sorry. All right, I am getting 22.186. Okay, y'all, I know that got a little bit messy. I hope you were able to follow. Okay, I know that was only three problems, but I really hope it helped you out. Until next time, bye, y'all.